All right, students, let me give you an example of something that can happen. Let's say your little sister is going to France for a summer exchange program. You get a letter from the lycée that says that they need the measurements so they can fit her for her vest and uniform. Well, your sis little sister is five feet tall, but here's the thing, they need that in centimeters. How do you change the feet into centimeters? Well, this is what we call the use of conversion factors and dimensional analysis. And although the majority of the practice problems we do are not really what this process is about, we're going to use it later for other things, it is good to practice using simple exchanges between particularly the metric and the common or English system. Now, before we go there, uh, we're going to need to do a little reviewing here about fractions. Just very quick interlude, all right? Uh, fraction is a ratio of one value to another. So let's say A over B, where B is not zero. And there are certain things we can do in terms of operations. For example, if, when I multiply fractions, I basically multiply the numerators and I multiply the denominators. A number divided by itself, or a fraction of same over same equals one. So that means that if I take any fraction and multiply times you know, A over A, I get the same fraction back. Also, if I multiply a fraction A over B times C over A, this shows that the A's will cancel because they essentially is like multiplying times one and you get C over B. And then the last thing is that if I have an equality between two uh, values, A equals B, then if I divide both sides by B, of course, or if I divide both sides by A, I'm going to get 1. Okay, why am I saying this? Well, because we're going to do these operations, but what we're going to do instead of A's and B's, or let's say simple numbers, you know, 2's and 6's and 3's and 7's, we're going to attach to each one of those values a unit, and we're going to treat the measurement, you know, both the value and the unit, as a numerator or denominator in some of these operations. To do this, we need what is called a unit equation or equivalence statement. It's a statement where you are presented with the, by the equivalence between two quantities. For example, 2.54 centimeters equals one inch. A conversion factor is a fractional quantity of the unit equation with the units we're converting from on the bottom and the units we're converting to on the top. In other words, I want to change that equivalence statement, that unit equation, into a fraction by dividing both sides by either one. For example, you have 2.54 centimeters divided by one inch or one inch divided by 2.54 centimeters. As we said in the previous slide, remember, <coughs> If I have an equality there at the bottom, A equals B, then A over B equals 1, or B over A equals 1. So the idea here is to convert the unit equation into a conversion factor. In other words, a fractional quantity. Let's go back to our example. So your little sister is 5 feet tall, which is 60.0 inches tall. What would that be in centimeters? We need an equivalent statement. This one says one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Notice that I can establish two different conversion factors with this. One of them would be one inch over 2.54 centimeters. See, because as long as I leave the units in there, this is like saying A equals B, and I'm going to divide both sides by B. Or I can say 2.54 centimeters over one inch. Again, that's like A equals B, and I'm dividing both sides by A. Notice that it's important that you keep the units with the values. Otherwise, it doesn't work. I cannot say one centimeter it is 2.54 inches. That doesn't work. These two fractional quantities is what we call a conversion factor. So the way dimensional analysis works is I'm going to build a roadmap from what they give me, which in this case is 60.0 inches to what they want, which is centimeters. 
So I want my conversion factor to be one where the old units, in this case inches, are in the bottom, and the new units, in this case centimeters, are in the top. So which one should it be? Yeah, it should be the one on the right. 2.54 centimeters over one inch, because notice what happens. Just like the rules discussed, the inches are going to cancel out, and now I can let my calculator do the rest and find out this is 152 centimeters. Another way of displaying this is by using a grid. Okay, I put like a little grid and I put my amount they gave me here at the <coughs> excuse me at the top of the first uh, set of the grid. And then I'm going to put my conversion factor in the next one. Once more, the inches units are going to cancel out and I get 152 centimeters. You can use either one, either the uh, factors in parentheses or the grid method. It depends a lot, maybe sometimes, on how you're writing things. If you're writing by hand or you're putting it on a word processor. Uh, one may be easier than the other one, but either one is fine. All right. Now, sometimes when we convert between one set of units and another one, we had to do multiple steps. So let's consider the speed of sound in air. Here's what they give me. The speed of sound in air is about 343 meters per second. The reality is that if you live in the US, that is meaningless. We don't really know what that is because we're typically uh, accustomed to measuring speed in miles per hour. So let's convert this to miles per hour. So we're gonna need to start with what they give me, which is 343 meters per second. And I need a few things, right? I need to change all of this into miles per hour. That's my destination. To build a roadmap, I need some conversion units. I need to find out, well, how do I convert meters to miles? Well, that's my equivalent statement. One mile equals 1,609 meters. And by the way, in an exam situation, you don't have to memorize these conversion uh, units. They'll be given to you. And I also need to change seconds into hours. Not everybody knows this uh, off the top of their head, but one thing we know is that there are 60 seconds in a minute and there are 60 minutes in an hour. So we'll use these. Now, which order I put my steps in doesn't matter because the key thing is I need to make sure that the units that I want to get rid of are on opposite sides of each fraction uh, factor, right? And that the ones that I want at the end will stay where they need to be. In this case, both meters and seconds had to get wiped out. Let's start with the meters because we have a direct conversion here between uh, miles and meters, right? So let's put that one in first. We need the meters in the bottom and the miles on the top, right? So there's the meters on the top, meters on the bottom. That's going to cancel out. Now let's work on the next ones. Since I don't have a direct conversion between seconds and hours, I'm going to do it in multiple steps. So 60 seconds to one minute. Well, that'll take care of seconds here in the bottom, seconds here in the top. And then I'm going to put 60 minutes to one hour because that'll take care of minutes here on the bottom, minutes here on the top. Before I do my calculations, let's make sure the units will cancel out. So everything that's both on the top and on the bottom are going to cancel out and it's very important that when I put these conversion factors in I kept the units together with their corresponding numbers. Guys don't take shortcuts I know it's a little more work but it is worth the effort because this way you can check that everything cancels out and that you set up your roadmap correctly. Okay so meters will cancel out with meters, seconds here will cancel with seconds in the top, Minutes in the bottom here will cancel out with minutes in the top. And notice that now I'm left with the units I wanted, miles per hour. Let's put the numbers in. We get 767 miles per hour. Now somebody might ask, uh, Dr. DA, I notice that some of these numbers here are, you know, just have like one sig fig there and maybe one, maybe two sig figs there. Shouldn't we have rounded this to maybe 800 miles per hour? just uh, to follow sig fix rules that you've been kind of like pestering us with? Well, remember the rule. Where did these values come from? 
where what where does the 60 seconds over one minute or the 60 minutes over one hour come from well they come from amounts let me just circle the one hour to 60 minutes that is a definition that is an exactly defined relationship therefore we do not take it into account when counting sig figs as happens with most situations and you'll notice this later on typically the sig figs in an operation like this are going to end up being determined by the initial measured value in this case the 343 meters per second but that is something you will discover as you practice more and do more exercises all right okay so let's review our strategy here's how we're going to do dimensional analysis start with the number and units that you are given right that on the left then ask what units are being requested do that on the right side of your sequence where you can build your roadmap you can see where you're going now set up a solution roadmap with the necessary conversion factors remember you want to verify that all the units cancel out except for the units requested that is any unit you want to eliminate should be on opposite sides of the uh, fraction bars and now that you have it perform the operations and then adjust the final result to the correct number of significant figures so that's our roadmap that's our plan that's our strategy for doing these kinds of problems uh, i mentioned earlier the conversion factors or the equivalent statements well, remember that scientists use the metric system to define the you know, basic units of measure, like distance, mass, volume. Those are the ones that we use the most. And the way they work is you define a base unit and then you work with ranges in powers of 10. And these are the prefixes and the corresponding factors and symbols. And as I mentioned earlier, you're going to have to memorize this set. All right. So, no, you don't have to remember how many feet are in a meter or how many pounds uh, or how many pounds are in a kilogram or things like that. So you don't have to remember any conversions between systems. But within the metric system, uh, you are going to have to memorize these uh, prefixes, the factor multipliers and the symbol for each. Now. One of the things in the metric system is that the metric system operates on base 10. That's the same way our number system operates. So if you want, I can give you a little memorization tool. You don't have to do this, but it's a kind of a cool one that I learned from a former colleague of mine. So let's write out all of these. I'm going to go from kilo all the way to nano. And notice that I left the base here, the base unit in the middle. That could be grams, it could be meters, it could be liters, all right? Uh, notice the following. I'm going to call this the King Henry Memorization Tool, <laughs> okay? Here we go. Remember this phrase. King Henry died by drinking chocolate milk too moldy, too nasty. Look at the first letter of each one of those words. King, K, Henry, Hector, died, Deca, etc., etc. Notice also that as you get to milli for the M, there's a you know start to means you skip to moldy, skip to nasty for the M of micro and for the N of nasty. Although you might want to remember that the actual uh, what do you call that? Uh, let me go back here for a moment. The actual symbol for micro is actually the Greek letter mu here. Okay, let's go back here. Back to our presentation. Okay, so again, if you want to remember it this way, let me show you how this works. Let's say that I want to find out how many centigrams are in 23.4 grams. I don't want to do like converting grams to centigrams, finding a conversion factor, because the reality is that everything is working in powers of 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the 23.4, I'm going to put extra zeros, and I'm going to take note of where I start and where I finish. I'm starting in grams, which is right there, that's my base. 
And where am I going? I'm going to centigrams. Okay, so that means that I'm going one, two spaces to the right. So that means all I have to do is move my decimal period two spaces to the right. And I get 2,340 centigrams. Not only do I get the right uh, amount, I will even have the right number of sig figs, which is three. So again, you are welcome to do things this way. Within the metric system, it's sometimes not worth doing all of the dimensional analysis conversions. It might be easier to simply roll the decimal period around. Let's do one more practice exercise for this. A vial contains 15 milliliters ML, of blood serum. Convert this volume into liters. And again, you should by now know the conversions. One milliliter is 10 to the negative three liters. And don't forget that we use uh, a capital or uppercase L in this case for liters, all right? So we can change this equivalent statement into, oops, sorry. Sorry, I pushed the wrong button here. Get me back here. Okay, here we go. We can convert this equivalent statement into this conversion factor, one milliliter to one times 10 to the negative three liters, or one times 10 to the negative three liters to one milliliter. Again, remember, whenever you make the conversion factor, you have to keep the units with the number. Don't switch them around. So let's try out dimensional analysis. Write down what they give me, 15 milliliters. I need to get to liters, so that means that I need to cancel out milliliters. I want the conversion factor that has milliliters on the bottom and liters on the top. And of course, 15 times 10 to the negative three, we get 1.5 times 10 to the negative two liters. Okay, let's say that I want to use the King Henry approach. I want to write down the number I have, 15.00. Remember, I'm going from milliliters to liters. That means that I'm moving from milli to the base unit, that is three spaces. So I'm going to move the decimal period one, two, three spaces, and I get 0 0.015 liters, which is the same as I got in the other one. See how simple it is? very easy okay so you're gonna have a chance to practice a lot of this stuff in your so-called experiment m which is a set of worksheets you're going to be doing some conversions between different uh units within the metric system and also between systems so i'll let you practice that and also of course you have the practice in your uh, end of chapter one problems Later in the semester, I'm going to address this again in the sense that, you know, really, these types of exercises are not what we're going to use dimensional analysis for. We're going to use it here for practice, but later on, the more interesting type of questions that we want to answer when we're using dimensional analysis have to do with, for example, I have these many grams of nitrogen and these many grams of hydrogen. If I react it, how many grams of the product ammonia can I get? See, that is a more interesting and more relevant question in terms of chemistry than, you know, trying to find out how to change your little sister height from feet or inches into centimeters. All right. Thank you very much. I will see you soon.